GHS 42. We praise you because of your word, which you always give us in wisdom and in love, which you give us so that you can prepare us for heaven. We pray that this very day, what we share from the word of God will be of benefit to every one of us in Jesus' name. Guide us into the rivers of living water in your world. Refresh us, enlighten us, teach us, and train us in the way we ought to go. In Jesus' name we pray. And God has so much for us in the word of God to make marriage a glorious possibility. And yet human beings have made it something bad and negative, something that you know makes you to suffer. Instead of the many promises and privileges we have in the Bible concerning marriage, and the family, the source or the essence or the center of marriage with many people is just their problems. And today we're talking on a major problem in marriage. 
When a man and a woman come together in matrimony, in wedlock, or marriage, there are many things that bring problems into the marriage. But the number one, the central problem, is how to deal with money. And so this money, we're looking at the message money and marriage. It can be a blessing if we have money. Yet it can be something that is not blessed but something very harmful if we don't know what to do with the money. Many things cause problems in families in relation to money. One, it could be because of an ambition on the side of the man or the woman to accumulate wealth. So the man is always outside working and you know robbing the family of fellowship and love and time and affection because he's always outside looking for money. He has an ambition to accumulate very much. Number two, it may be because of pressure from other people just for him to have more and more and more. Number three, what sometimes causes problem in family is because there is envy because he wants to live the man wants to live the lifestyle of a Mr. Smith or Mr. Joe somewhere or it is a woman that is always looking at another woman and she wants to spend money like they are spending money in Psalm 17 3 verses 2 and 3. Psalm 73 verses 2 and 3. But as for me, my feet were almost gone, my steps were well nigh slipped, for I was envious of the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. And so it brings problems to the family when we do not just sit down together and discuss how we want to plan and budget and spend money. But we're always looking at another family to lead us in the way we ought to spend money. Another reason for problems in money management or money um, finance management in the family is because of pride. Oh, the desire to feel bigger than everybody around. And in Proverbs chapter 16, we're told in verse 5, everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, they shall not be unpunished. Verse 18, Pride goes before destruction and an haughty spirit before it falls. Verse 19 Better it is to be an, of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil of the proud. I told you that problems come into marriage on the money uh, spending because of one ambition to accumulate. To because of pressure to keep on having more, there is a possessive attitude on the family. Three, because of envy, wanting to be like the other family. 
For because of pride, wanting to feel bigger than everybody around. Spending lavishly only to make yourself feel big. Number five, because of fear of the future. No people are concerned to save for the future and they're not, they are not spending for today. The man is, you know, desirous so that in my old age I will have money and it's not spending so that he will live till old age. Number six, we have problems because there is a basic fundamental disagreement between the husband and the wife on how the money in the family ought to be spent. There are different perspectives about money. Different sets of priorities in the family. Different interests in the family. And therefore they have different ideas on where the money ought to go. And because of that, there is always a disagreement and argument on how money should be spent in the family. Number seven, the reason why we have problems in the family concerning money. Selfishness. Caring for self and buying things for self without considering other members of the family. Number eight, overindulgence and covetousness. Spending money on things that don't have any lasting value on the family. Expensive entertainment. Only to impress people when he is not impressing his wife and children, not spending on them. You know, in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 17, we're told this, and it's a word of caution, a word of warning. That you're spending your family after you have, you know, giving your tithe and your offering to God, your family is number one. And in Proverbs chapter 21 verse 17, He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. And so you see these problems are caused in families. I see I have more reasons to give you why we have problems in our family on spending. Number nine, the reason we have problems in spending is because of what we call impulsive buying, buying on emotion. Buy now and think later. You don't think at all before the buying. No plan, no budget. You just put money in your pocket. And then you are going outside. Then you see something. Your emotions rise up. And you feel, I must get that thing. You buy now and think later. That's what we call impulsive buying. Number 10, the reason we have problems with money in the family. Shaky and shaky investments. You see the program, a project of getting rich quick. When a friend comes to you and he says, if we take that business and we do it, you'll get money in one year. And so all your money, you invest it upon something that will not bring any result out. They don't pay off, that is, they are not profitable at all. And the reason you have lost your money that way is because you do it now and then you are thinking later of the consequences. You see, in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 20, A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich 
shall not be innocent. Verse 22. He that hastens to be rich has an evil eye and considereth not that poverty shall come upon him. Reason number 11 why we have problems in families on money. Materialistic love. Having love for material things that may not be useful at all to the family. You don't think of the value and the use of the thing you are buying. You just spend money on them, put money on them without thinking of the essential things the family would need. Number 12, we call it unwise purchase. Look at me here. You see, advertisers, they are taught to get money out of your pocket. You see those billboards on the road, whenever you are going on the way, you see a large signboard. The writers have studied psychology. They have studied how to influence the mind of man to take a decision which they want, not a decision that will profit you. When you read those billboards, there will be something within you to tell you, go and buy that thing. A wise purchase. Do you know something when you go to the King's Way or to Chalarams or any shop? Understand that those people are trained in getting money out of your pocket. In the arrangement of the things they have in the shop to attract your attention. When you get into the shop, especially a supermarket. Now you bought the things you really need, the things you really want. And you when you put that when you put those things in the tray. And you are coming very near where the cashier is to pay your money. They arrange some other things there in a very nice way. Things that you really don't need. But the arrangement is so attractive because they have used the psychology of selling. You say, Wait, I've not finished. I, I must take this thing. You take that. Then, oh, you know, the paper they put on the bottle, they so make it very look nice. And you know, it's not the paper you are going to eat, it's the thing inside. And because of the colorful paper, which is just the method of advertisement, we make a wise purchasing. Even the people that are not educated in psychology, you go to the market, and as you are going, on, as you are going along, the woman selling gari, you will taste it, and say, this is wonderful. I've never seen this like before. And then as you are going, Madam, come now. Your husband will eat this one, now one for you. That's not what you came to the market to buy. But because this woman can talk, trained in experience, to get money from your pocket. You say, let me buy a little. And then you buy. Before you get to where you see what you really want, somebody else says, this has just come. And you know these young boys that are selling, uh, you know, clothes uh, for children, clothes for adults, and clothes for everybody. They dangle it like this and tell you, Mama, you never got this one. You need this. Mama, now, because of that, without thinking and making your plan on spending, you just buy and buy and buy. Now, money has finished. Number 13, why we suffer? Why we have problems in, in, um, in spending money? I call it saving and suffering. You put the money somewhere. You like a bulging 
opening bank account. What you are suffering, you are not spending the money. The money is supposed to be spent. Spent wisely and reasonably. Number 14. <laughs> Loving money more than your wife. You marry your money, you divorce your wife. You keep your money to your bosom, near your heart, and then your wife can stay apart of. You carry your money on your shoulder, you never carry your children on the shoulder. You watch your money, you protect your money, you never watch your wife and protect your wife. Your money is becoming fat, your wife is becoming lean. That's why we have problems in money. And in the marriage, if your if your money does not grow lean and your wife grow fat, you have a problem. If it's your children and your wife that is getting lean and then your money is getting fat, that's a problem. That means you are overrating money above everything in life, above everybody in life. You are trusting your money more than you trust God. Do you see number 15 why we have problems in money? In my, in, uh, that is in managing money in the family. Squandering money. Foolish spending. Uncontrolled spending that has no plan. Number, number 16. Canal simple spending on women outside and the only woman inside has no money to spend. That's why we have problems. When you put all your money, you put it on children outside, women outside, things and people outside, and the people living with you, they have no food to eat. This is number 17 why we have problems in spending money. Operating habitually on the credit system that is on borrowing. So that every month when you get your money, you are paying out debt every time. You are never free. Now, number 18. Unwise independent spending. Independent. That means you never discuss it with your wife, with your husband. The money comes in without any discussion, any agreement. You are just spending. Number 19. Failure to discuss finance with your partner. That's why we have problems in our spending money. The husband and the wife, they never talk about it. They never sit down to say, this is the amount that has come in. How do we spend? Reason number 20. Failure to learn from your past mistakes in the wrong use and the wrong spending of money. You see, life is a school. And our mistakes are supposed to teach us to become wiser for tomorrow. Now, I want to help you to see whether you have a problem or not. Do you have a viral to write with you? If you have a viral, can you raise it up and let me see? This is a good class. Now, in all the questions I'll be asking now, this is personal to you. Between you and your wife, you write yes or no. Now, I'm to help you to make you see how you have been spending money. Now, when I read out question number one, you think about your life, you think about your family, you think about your spending. Then you write yes or no. Number one, do I owe for small day-to-day -day expenditure like rice, like gari, like little little things like omo, like soap? Do I owe money? to the people who are selling on small small day to day expenditure don't let anybody spy what you are writing now number 2 do I have to borrow money to pay for 
fixed expenses like my house rent, instrumental paying, or paying back my debt. The things that are fixed, I know I have to spend money on. Do I have need to borrow money to pay for them? Yes or no? Number three. Am I unable to, to say how much I spend? That is how much money I need each month for my regular expenses. If somebody just asks me, how much do you spend every month? Do you really need every month to meet your normal expenses? Do I know it? Number four, do I shuffle funds around? That is, I originally set a particular amount of money to buy this thing, and then in the middle of the month, I just change my mind and I spend it on another thing. Do I shuffle funds around using cash originally set aside for other purposes? Yes or no? Number five. Do I now borrow money to buy some items which in the past I could buy freely without borrowing money? Yes or no? Number six. Am I taking new loan to pay old loan? That is, I owe, I owe Peter money. And Peter is saying, bring money, bring money. I go to Paul to borrow uh, money from Paul to pay the money I owe Peter. Do I do that? Yes or no? Number seven. Do I find it necessary to depend on extra income to make ends meet? Number eight, have I been repeatedly unsuccessful in saving for the near future needs? That is, I need some furniture at home. I need a fan at home. I need some other necessary things at home. And I'm almost always saying, I will save for it, I will save for it, I will save for it, but it has never been impossible for me. So have I been repeatedly unsuccessful in saving money for these future needs? Number nine, have I and my wife been having frequent arguments based on money problems? Yes or no? Number ten, do I have to engage in suspicious, dishonest business uh, so as to be able to provide for myself and the family? Number 11. Does my list of things I've just got to have now keep on growing no matter how many of the items I buy? That is, you know, every time I just tell myself, I need this, I need this, I need this, I need this. And no matter how many of those things I buy, the things I say I need, they keep on growing. If I need 10 things and I buy 3 out of them, I see that I need 12. Now, if I buy 5 again, I see that I need 13. Does my need of things I've just got to have, does that need keep growing no matter how many things I've bought? Uh, uh, yeah, yes or no? Are you writing down the answers? Personal answers? You're wonderful. Number 12. Do I find myself hesitant and unwilling to pay my tithe from my income or to give anybody in need any amount of money? Yes or no? I've asked you 12 questions. And um, some of the answers are yes and some are no. Look at your paper, am I right? Some answers are yes, some answers are no. Am I right? 
The ones for yes, look at it very well. They are more than the ones for no. Don't let anybody spy your paper. Now, the answers for yes are more. Am I right? Okay. If the answers for yes are more, that means you have a problem. That means you do not know how to spend very well. It's a test I've given you to make you know how people just spend. And people do not know how to control their spending. And money makes them unhappy and sad instead of helping them in the family. You know some people People say, if I have more money, all my problems are solved. My brother, my sister, remember when you were on level 04? Money was never sufficient. They promoted you to level 06. Did it become sufficient? No. They promoted you to level 08. Did it uh, become sufficient? No, you go to level 09. Was it sufficient? sufficient? No. Listen to me. More money has a way of generating more spending. When more money comes in, there will be more things to buy. Am I right? They are never sufficient. The money is never sufficient. And it is because we have no wisdom and understanding on how to control our spending. After I told that section one false some failure. Now you see we have our faults and our failures in spending money in the family. I'm going to number two which is a faith for fun. Now you see to be able to have money to spend we need to believe God. That God will supply. And in Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 10. Reading from verse 4. He becometh poor that dealeth with his slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. That's how to get rich. To become diligent in your work. Faithful in service. Present in the place of your work. But if you are lazy and indolent and you know unwilling to work, of course you will not be able to have. In verse 5. He that gathered in, gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth. Shame. Blessings are upon the head of the just. But violence covers the mouth of the wicked. In chapter 12, verse 14. Chapter 12, verse 14. A man shall be satisfied with, the, with good by the fruit of his mouth, but the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. 1214. In chapter 13 of Proverbs, verse 11. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. From verse 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, not after the tradition which he received of all. Verse 10. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. You see, you ought to find work and have good labor 
Don't be the type of dubious, dishonest business. Remember the work you do, God will provide for you. There are many types of work you can do. Now you ought to find out with your friends or from your friends and you know, discuss together. That's why when it's fellowship, if you have a problem on getting jobs, be free and discuss with, you know, brothers and sisters who are here with us. Our brothers and sisters here are wonderful. There are times they know that there are vacancies and there are places of work. They come to tell the ministry. We announce it and many people have got jobs that way. Now apart from getting money through the labor of your hand, God also provides in various ways. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 19, but God shall supply all your need according to his riches, not your riches, his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. In James chapter 4 verse 2, God provides for those who will pray and pray in faith. In James 4 2, ye lost and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain, ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. You know, if you depend upon God, God will make you to have sufficient for you to spend and for your family to spend. We are told in chapter 8 of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 17 and 18. And thou say in thine heart, My power and the might of mine hand has gotten me this well. But thou shalt remember. But thou shalt remember. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get well. That he may establish his covenant that is well unto thy fathers. As it is this day. God has promised that He will provide for us. And in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse, eight, verse 19, Ecclesiastes 5 19, every man also to whom God has given riches and wealth and has given him power to eat thereof and to take his portion and to rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God. So God has the power, the knowledge, the provision to give us the supply to our needs. Now that you have money does not mean your family will be happy. If you don't know how to spend that money, that you have money does not mean that your children will be cared for. If you don't know how to spend that money on the family and on the children, I'm concluding with steps to financial freedom. You want to be free from the anxiety and the worry and the problems that money brings to the family. You want to understand how you can spend in a wise way. In a way that the money is no, it's not a problem to you but a blessing, a privilege for you to have. Now keep your attention clear. And focus on me here because I'm giving you four points on 
on how to have financial freedom. How your money will be your servant and not your master. How you will use your money but your money will not use you. How your money will make you fat and as the money is growing lean, not how you will be lean and your money will be growing fat. How you will not come under the curse because of the load of money, but you will come under the blessing of God. Now that you have got the money by working, you receive the salary at the end of the month, or you receive your pay because uh, you know you are trading and now you are getting money. Now for those of us who have not married yet, all these things are very useful to you. But, but I'm now talking particularly to those who are married. Step number one. Settle your financial differences between the husband and the wife. Because financial differences is one of the biggest causes of disharmony and problem in marriage. So, step number one. Sit down to discuss financial matters together. Poor communication leads to financial foolishness. When you sit down to talk about money, about spending, what are you going to say? Talk about your priorities for spending. Talk about the necessity to save a little of what comes in. Pinpoint any area you have recently spent foolishly. Agree on some rules in the family whereby you'll be spending for better family budget. If since you have married you have never done that, you should do that today. If you never talk about money, that's why the problem is there. If most of you have never sat down, have never sat down to discuss your priorities, your experiences, your foolishness, your mistakes, and you know your ways of spending money, there will be mistakes more that will come into the family. If there is no money, sit down and talk about it. If there is little money, be frank, be open, sit down and talk about it in the family. If there are needs to be spent upon, sit down together and talk about it. Number two, educate yourself about money management. Study the principles of spending money. You say, where can I study that? The book of Proverbs talks about money so much. You say, where else can I study about that? The parables of Jesus Christ. You see, two sorts of the parables of Jesus Christ talk about money. Where else can I study that? In the Old Testament, there is mention about, you know, family living together, spending together, rejoicing together, agreeing together, and, um, you know, learning together. Many, many things you can learn. Study the principles of spending money, about money management. Study on budgeting. And budgeting means, uh, you know, before you ever spend the money, you sit down, you say, what do we actually need? And then you see how to make the budget to meet, you know, the, the, the uh, financial demand on the family. Study about spending. Now, uh, those of us who are working in offices, let me ask you. Have you ever studied about uh, paying tax? Oh, you say that's the problem of the government. No, it is your problem. Problem. Have you ever filled any form on, you know, paying your tax? If you don't pay any form, the government will be taking the highest amount from you. Before you fill the form, talk to people who understand, who know how to fill that form. 
Sit down together with your wife and study on budgeting, spending, taxes, and investments. You know, you go to your friend and you see that your friend has a pole tree at the back, you know, of the house. Without ever discussing with your wife, you come back home and you say, Well, I'm going to spend some money on, on raising up a pole tree. Before your wife knows what is happening, the carpenters have come, they are built the thing you have got to, you know, you have gone to get chicken and they are all there. And you bought 300 before the next week, 100 of them have died. Then you, you call your wife and say, Ah, what's the problem? The thing you should have done before to discuss, you now want to discuss. Study together on saving, on credit, many things you can study about with your wife, with your husband. Number three, avoid debt like sickness. What is debt? When the sum total of what you owe is more than the sum total of what you have, what you own, that's the that case you are in the red, you are in debt. How can we avoid debt? Already, if you are owing some amount of money, sit down to plan how you will pay back. If possible, talk to the person you are owing. Tell him you will not be able to pay everything just at once will be paying instrumentally. If that is not possible, if he says, I want everything all together, telling my brother, my sister, or you know where, my uncle, I do not have all the money right now. Look at the money that comes into you. If you are owing, let's say, 300 naira, by self-control, by self-discipline, will I be able to pay 60 naira every every month and the man says and you know you can do that but the man says I don't want 60 naira every month just give me all the 300 that will take you five months you say okay give me chance the first month you put 60 naira aside you know that is not your money it's like you have paid it back you will never touch it second month you add the 60 naira third month add the 60 naira at the end of the five months you have 300 naira to go and pay to that man do you know what happens when you have paid all your debt the heavy load on your head is lifted the fear that comes to your heart when you see the man you are owing money that fear goes away the bondage that makes your house a prison yet for you the bondage is taken away the joy that has gone away from you because of the death that joy will come back you will be happy you will be a free citizen of Nigeria you will not say who is that one coming am I at home now my children, you, do you think I'm at home now? What will you tell that man when he comes? There will be no necessity of that when you are paid all your debt. And when you see the person at the Bible study at the fellowship, and the usher said, uh, Brother, sit down here. On that row is that man that you owe money. You take it, you say, I'm going to the toilet for. Then you get to the toilet. When when you are coming from the toilet, you go to the other side so you don't see that man. You see, after you have paid all your debt, there will be total freedom from your heart. Now, agree on a family priority list and stick to it. You see, that means to sit down with your wife, with your Bible in your hand. Now, you ask your wife, Now, my wife, this month you'll be a new month. What do we need in this house?
house for this month. The wife says, uh, such and so. Such and so. Such and so. Such and so. Then you say, but have you forgotten this? Oh, yes, we need that thing. And then you write a long list of what you need for this month. That's not the end. You say, my wife now, which is number one, the most important, that if we don't have, we just can't do without. You are rearranging the list of what you have written down from the most important, the urgent, the uh, the one that is you know just important you just cannot do without the one that are less important you must decide that before you ever go to the market you know the what happens to us is that we take a salary and why we are taking a salary you have 300 naira in the pocket and you say i need something you are not treating those things now. You go to Kingsway. You go to Chalaran. You go to the market. You go to supermarket. And you are going around like a big man. And then all the people are saying, Come, buy, come, buy, come, buy. Before you come back, 300 naira is gone. And then it's also you have bought all those things. Say, ah, but I think I need this one. I didn't remember. Ah, I didn't buy this one. Before you ever get out of the house, decide what you need before you go and buy. Don't ever go and visit a large um, shop with money in your pocket if you have not decided what to buy. You cannot go to market and not see what to buy. Even when you don't need it, you will buy the toy. You will buy, you will buy ball. You will buy sunshade. You will buy, uh, you know, you will buy chair. You will buy sleeper. You will forget that Gary is important, but there's no Gary in the market you have gone. That's why you mustn't just foolishly go to the market with all your money in your pocket. Leave the money behind. And then decide on what you are actually need. Now, how do we make budget? Now, this is the steps you need to take in making a budget. The money is in your hand, now you want to buy. Number one, what do we have coming in each month? What is the monthly take-home pay that comes to the family? Decide that. Number two, what are the fixed expenses? On house rent, installmental pay, on food, household spending, on the car maintenance, on transportation, on the time, on the little amount you ought to save for the near future. I'm going to give you some figures there for the credit to rise. After you are taking away your time and the tax has been removed. Now, you break the money that remains with it to three sections. 10% that is 1 out of 10 should go for saving for uh, emergency or whatever spending I may have unknowingly in the future. 10%. Then 20%, 2 out of 10, will go for the debt that you owe. Because you see, if you don't plan about paying the debt, the debt will be there all the time. But if you are paying little by little by little, eventually everything will go. Then it is 70%, 7 out of 10 parts that will go for the regular living expenses. It's called the 10-20-70 system of spending. 
The financial counselor said that this is the best way of spending. And after you have removed your tithes and you have paid your tax to the government. All that remains, you don't spend everything that remains. 10% for savings. 20% for debt. 70% for your normal, regular living expenses. Now, uh, what's left then for the variable expenses? When you take away your total monthly fixed uh, expenses from the total monthly income, all that remains is for variable spending. You know, giving this mandates and helping this other one, uh, doing this little thing over there. Now, you must also sit down to discuss in budgeting how do we now reasonably and wisely spend what is available for the family. Now, you see, I'm very concerned about our families and how we spend money. Because it's not only for married people. Many times, our young brothers and young sisters have started, have started a business and they have not been able to get on well. They can, they can sell, they can work, they can trade, they can have money, but because they don't know financial management, the businesses are crumbling all the time. Money is a tool for the provision of our needs. Money is a tool for sharing blessings with other people. Money is a tool to be able to provide satisfactorily for the needs of the family. Don't let it become your master. Have wisdom in spending. And then you'll be able to reach the goal of financial freedom in your life. Have you got anything today? Let's rise up and pray. Whatever we have learned, let us bring it to the Lord. We tell the Lord we are sorry for the foolish spending of the past. Now we want to be spending wisely in such a reasonable way to be profitable for the family. If you don't have money, talk to God about it. He'll provide for you. If you have, think and plan and study about how to spend. 